jumping a little bit off the subject, I was really moved. There was an episode of Sons of Anarchy that I, oh, yeah. I just, like I said, I just started oh, yeah. watching it. You've seen most of them. Absolutely. But I always thought it was just kind of like a, kind of a meathead, like biker gang. Mm-hmm. But I started watching it, and something he's, um... Uh, Jax? Is he, uh, the main not Jax. Oh. It was actually the, the kind of kingpin of the Clay. Clay. Clay, yeah. He says something about, like, we've kept all these big box out of the thing. And, and all of a sudden yeah. it kind of struck me as, like, it made a world of sense to me. Yeah. Whereas, uh, like, biker gangs up to then were just, like, violent, angry people to yeah. me. But then to all of a sudden see what he does for that community right. to keep it local. To, not right. so much local, but to keep it a community not overtaken by big mm-hmm. business and stuff like right. that. Like, I, I was really moved by that. And I, I was just like... For a while, I always thought they were kind of the bad guys until that episode, yeah. and all of a sudden, I was just like, "Wow, what he's doing is really kind of cool." I mean, he shouldn't be running guns yeah. or anything. And but... that'll come up a lot in in future episodes, in future seasons. Um... Yeah, Sons of Anarchy is a phenomenal show. I didn't give it the credit it was due. I knew it was a very popular show, and sometimes that turns me off. Like I've never read any of the Harry Potter books because. It was so hyped and so big, and it, I mean that's not the only reason why. It really doesn't appeal to me, and I'm a huge fantasy fan, but just it doesn't take me where I want to go in the world of fantasy. Anywho, I'd like to tell you that as I have written here, we go on to talk about some video game stuff, which I thought we had, but I haven't found it in all the edited footage that I've been going through. It all comes back to D&D. Uh, this next two parts, I'm going to try to put them both up today, are both just completely D&D related. Um, <laughs> we talk about our favorite die. Uh, we talk about how digital influence has started to make its way in over the last 10 years or so with D&D. Maybe not that long, but people using iPads and laptops and stuff to... Uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense rather than carrying around books, but I don't like it. <laughs> and I mention why in this video. So check this out. Uh, we're going to talk about D&D for probably the next 20 to 40 minutes. <laughs> And uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you stick around for it. And I will be back on my regular schedule probably early next week, maybe even as early as Sunday night. Um, So, you guys, thank you guys for always coming back and checking these out. I think it's a lot of fun talking with Nick and Chris. So uh, stay tuned. And there's about two. And there's going to be that secret episode if I can find enough footage to keep from it. So have a good one and check this out. I mean, you've probably seen how many times I'm playing Skyrim. Oh, yeah. yeah. Skyrim is just a fun game to always go back to. And that goes back to my whole end of the world, you know, last person standing. Like, being that that game is kind of encompasses that feel for me, where it's such a vast. You, you think know, that continent. game does it? Fallout 3 does an excellent job. Yeah, too. I, yeah I, now that is a console <laughs> game that I actually have played a lot of. It's one of the only console games that, like, I got pretty far into. Like, I was hooked for a while. Um, and there's not a lot of games that do that for me because I just, I, you know, I like to draw. I like to do this. I like mm-hmm. to do so many other things. I play D and D with you guys mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that's, my, like, that's always been my uh, yeah. D and D has always been the top of my. It list. always comes back to D and D, or at least some type of tabletop RPG. Yeah, man. I just, I don't care what system it is, or whatever. I love because it's it's friends getting together, <laughs> not necessarily in a virtual, you know, uh, network or yeah. something like that. You're actually sitting around a table. You're joking. Yeah. You're, you know, I, I just, I've always loved. Now, all right, here's my... When I got introduced to D&D for the yeah. very first time, it was like 1993, <laughs> the summer of 1993. I went down to Plymouth with my friend Joe, and he prepared a campaign for me. He's the only person I'd ever run with, played with, knew anything about D&D. He had all the D&D stuff he hadn't run in years. So I played like six characters myself, <laughs> and he was the only DM. That's how I got introduced to D&D, and, like, I had fun with it, but it was tough because, like, he had pre-rolled characters for me and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So, as much as I'm very, like, uh, you know, honored that he introduced me to the world of Dungeons & Dragons, it was probably, like, the worst example of how a game really goes. His characters are so personalized by, like, the character creation. Like, Mm -hmm. you create your character at that point. Yeah, Pre-rolled characters kind of ruin stuff. I take back a little bit what we said earlier, I guess, coming back full circle. Um... Mm-hmm. I remember um, we, you know, when we were talking about the first time we ever played D and D, or what was our initial the experience first, with it? like actual campaign was with your pre-made with the pre-made characters, right? Well, yeah, I, I would say that I didn't start playing consistently until high school. Yeah, um, particularly senior year in high school. 
Mm. Um, that's where my friend Mason, my brother, my friend Park. My what year was that? Uh, 09. Oh, nine. Yeah, that's yeah. probably yeah. Which, yeah, wow, that does not seem that long ago. <laughs> but, uh, it's probably 2009. Or, or 2008 or 2009. And we, we, I knew about D&D before that, and I, I would probably say the first time I ever had any contact with D&D was when I found it. Um, there was an old box set. The red box. Yeah, the red oh, box. Oh, the sweet was, red box. Yeah. yeah, it was from the 70s, the late 70s. And um, it was in my grandmother's basement, which <clears throat> was strange, especially knowing my grandparents. Um, yeah, they, they weren't adverse to the idea of a role-playing game or to D&D. Mm -hmm. They didn't subscribe to that whole, you know, like that, that 80s crate you know anti D. &D <laughs> they bought it craze. for todd and he didn't ever would anything with it. yeah well that's the funny part i remember opening it up and seeing something on some of the graph paper um kind of like these very preliminary sketches of a dungeon that's like awesome. old stuff like that that my uncle had drawn and thinking knowing who my uncle is he, he would seem like the last person to play something like that and so uh, seeing these old drawings that he had these done, are kind of glimpses of his childhood yeah it's it strange but it was definitely um i it was definitely something that he picked up, got bored with really quickly, and was like, I don't know what this is, mm -hmm. and just ditched it. My grandmother brought me it home from a yard sale she got it at. Uh, gee, this is going back. It, that was definitely after my father passed away, so that was 82. September my grandmother bring it home. I never did anything with it. I don't know what happened to it, but um, it wasn't until, like I said, like 92, 93, I think, that I finally actually you know, really played D and D for the first time. I remember getting the books. And that is just one of those things that like it's a world it's almost like a drug where you, you, you taste a little bit of something and eventually you gotta have everything. Like I or at least for me. Well, I mean D and D and RPGs like that fill the role of allowing you, the player, to feel like you're part of a story. Yeah. 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 And even though it's not like serious. I'm not seriously thinking right, that I'm right. you're doing this. Right. I've never it's, thought it's yeah. fun. Like it's just it's much better than a video game mm -hmm. ever can be. Absolutely, I mean, ever. It, it's more well. And here's the big thing about um, we, that the comparison between pen and paper RPGs and video games. You know, I think it kind of. You know, I'm not one to, to play the whole generation war like all oh, those millennials and you know, they're mm -hmm. lazy and entitled. But they are. They really are. Well, the way the technology has gone, there is a mystique that's been lost. And you know, there, I even start getting angry when I see people pulling out a tablet playing D and D. It starts grinding yeah, my gears. If you've noticed, oh. since I've played, maybe the first game I had the computer out. From then on, yeah. I, I've left. Well, I mean, I don't see. I don't like tell the person to stop doing it, but it does. Like, it doesn't peeve me, but it's like something like, oh, you're not doing it right. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a good way of like you're that. missing out, man. Well, this is the way you did it a long yeah, time. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell anyone how. To play yeah, they, right, right, right. No. If you want to use a tablet, yeah, that's fine. I'm not gonna welcome. argue it's, with it. It is but personal preference. I just remember always being pen and paper, yeah. literal yeah. pen and paper. Like, and I'm fine yeah. with the mini. And that's the thing, like with with pen and paper, you create your own world. So you everyone visualizes it differently. I'm sure. Yeah. And that's so fascinating. It's like it's like a novel in a sense, but it's a novel that's cooperative that everyone writes. That's interactive mm -hmm. and there's involves so much storytelling and I feel that it could have been our generation or a modern version of what our ancestors mm -hmm. did huddled around a campfire it's very likely. Stories. Right, right. Very and likely. that's what it is it's an advanced version of storytelling and unfortunately and you know I don't think pen and paper RPGs are going to die ever mm -hmm. um, but a lot of millennials a lot of people who are young don't have the same experience with that Mm -hmm. they, they, they're, be, they're being force fed stories um, and they're never given the opportunity to creatively yeah. uh, you know explore what they're capable of mm -hmm. and what their imagination is capable of because they've been spoon fed it by television by the media and, and video games and whatnot. but one must not you know underestimate how many people play D&D there are a lot oh, yeah. of people out there within the millennial age gap mm -hmm. group that do play D&D mm -hmm. and it'll I'm sure it'll continue I, I don't think it'll like I said I don't think it'll ever be a dead art form right 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 now for some people like it's almost nostalgic to play it like uh, or to purchase like the, the you know the, the stuff to play it and I think some people who start out thinking it you know, this is something that my father played, or so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Suddenly realize, wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Like, I'm having a lot of, you know, good in our case, is the opposite. Like our dad, had yeah, never played D &D. that is funny. We, yeah. We, yeah. Well, yeah. he played D and D at Jason Isaacson. With, yeah, but that really wasn't. 
right. much of an mm-hmm. experience for him. He did not like playing D&D, at least that way. But when he joined your campaign, he grew to like D&D. That's when he actually got, like, he gave it, started, decided to give it a second try. Oh, good, good. And he enjoyed it. Well, that so. makes me feel good, actually. So, yeah, you're, you're, that, was, that, was, that was good. Yeah. Um, that actually, <laughs> which is great. Yeah, it is nice. I mean, technology does have a place, I think. Oh, well, yeah, in the especially next for step character sheets. Because character right. sheets are a pain in the ass. I'll be completely honest. I'm surprised that with 5th edition, they didn't have some kind of software. Right. Like, yeah. with 4th edition, they did. Or was it 3rd? 4th or 4th. Well, yeah, fourth I'm, there may have been others, but I know 4th yeah. edition. Right, right. Like, they made, like, an effort to make this character builder, and they... Well, up, they had to. I was going to say. They had oh, to. It was the out of character control, creation yeah. for 4.0 was, <laughs> was har- ridiculous. They, it was almost a prerequisite. If you wanted to play the new guy, <laughs> you had out, to use the character generator. Almost, I mean, you could have. Oh, a steam plug, yeah. Mm. I mean, you, I mean, yeah, obviously, well, you could make your own character. You just have to write a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just felt like I was always referencing something. If I do this, then it allows me to do this and this. But it was like I was like, okay, so I got to look at this rule, and this rule affects this well, spell. I think the problem with like, it was it tried to be kind of an MMO. So mm, they it tried to appeal to the a new generation MMO. of people who are yeah. used to. MMORPGs. And, you know and I don't really think bit. that, uh, you know, that that's practical in a pen and paper yeah. game. But it mm. did bring in a lot of people. Nah, yeah. Well, not yeah, a lot. no, it made more old, people, old school gamers just mad. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, look at us towards the end of fourth edition. Like yeah. we, were we were getting tired of the system. We we're like, let's look at Pathfinder yeah. and like this we system was that. just getting out of the like, control. Like, Granted, it is true that that was what we started with yeah. when we first started in high school. We started with... But, you know, that's... You can't say that it brought... That's what brought us in because we would have just... No, we would have got... You would have used 3.5 if we had if we had been around during exactly. that period. 3.5 is that what you said? Yeah. 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 If, we, if we had been around during that period. That was the sweet period. spot. Yeah. I, I still feel... Like, I like 5th edition a lot. It's yeah. a lot more streamlined. But, you know, I, I started really and advanced Dungeons & Dragons. makes me want to just want to buy... Well, something about that just makes me want to buy the old ones and just... Because yeah, they're still around. Well, they re released like them dead. all, too. They just mm-hmm. put all new covers or cleaned them it's up. It's not like they're so. dead. They're still around. Yeah, yeah. People yeah you can play, play any system you really want. I mean, I mean, people act like these systems are, you know, I actually what you have a, to play. I made a killing on the Planescape stuff, mm-hmm. which sadly it was hard for me to part with because it's one of my favorite like, parts of a system. I think it was 2nd edition or 3rd edition. No, it was, yeah, it was 2nd edition. Um, people pay big money for the second oh, yeah. uh, Planescape stuff. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. But Tony Deterlizzi did all the art for that. And, like, that's what lured me into the Planescape stuff at first. I was like, what is this? This is stupid. I don't <laughs> want to... And then I got the original box that was, like, 20 bucks at Walden Books. Mm-hmm. And I remember going through it all and be like, oh, my God. Like, so it's not just a planet. You get all these planes. And there's, yeah. like, this, you know, Sigil is the, the center of the, the multiverse. And you go through Sigil to get here or there or there. Yeah. And how you get there. And, like, yeah. oh. I, I I got I, I'm not a big fan of Planescape. It just kind of turned me off from what I've seen in Planescape. At least I didn't see very much. Of Planescape. Well, I think is I see. I've always pretty much primarily run over played, and running a game like you get to a point I think as a, a DM in any campaign you play where like I mean I love my world Athalia. Like yeah, it took me great. ten oh. fifteen years to develop that world and trade routes and like races it's, and a, it's a really cool place but sometimes you're just like man it's just the prime material plane like yeah. I want to take this somewhere else I want to take Let's it do somewhere some other else. Stuff. and Planescape for me was a route to take people well, yeah. through to go to these other places and stuff it's a like convenient that. thing mm-hmm. especially when you're DM and you're tired of one place yeah yeah, yeah. I mean as, as far as like a plot device it's great yeah I mean it, it, it is a good but way to say creating segue. a campaign around mm. it just Normally isn't I idea. completely yeah. agree with yeah. that. That's were, a bad thing. I was surprised because they released back in the day before it was like books. They would do the box sets. Yeah. You'd have the uh, abyssal planes. You'd have the prime material plane box set. You'd have the astral plane. You'd have the all these like books started coming out. And you're like, okay, that's too much. Like when you're dealing with like Forgotten Realms and Toral or Dragonlance yeah. and Kryn. Like, it's like, okay, you have a set designated continents where you can go to. With Planescape, it was so vast. It was literally like it was being able to run an entire universe. And like, yeah. well, that's really cool. But you're right. As a plot point, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. As like a tool to like cut through the planes to yeah, get somewhere it's else, fine. it's cool. But, but you don't but, stay there. Yeah. You, you don't stay there. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. You don't stay there. Mm-hmm. You, do, you just use it as a plot point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I mean, it's really important that you do that. But, uh... 
At least not important. I mean, some people like different. This is stupid. It came. It's unbelievable. I don't know how many nights I sit here and do these yeah. videos, and they're just like, bloop, bloop, yeah. bloop. It's crazy. Yeah, they, they always move indoors when it gets cold out. Yep. Yeah. They're I mean, they don't bother those. me. Yeah, they're doing their thing. Uh, they're, I don't like... I was talking about this the other night, too. I love large quantities of things. Like, if you gave me a box full of, like, six-sided dice, mm -hmm. just nice and clean, and all the ones are facing up or something like that, I love that. You throw, like, a... like. A bunch of stink bugs in the corner of a room, and I'm fucking disgusted by it. I'm like, oh. Yeah. But there's um, a big difference between a D6. Yeah, there really yeah, is. <laughs> that's my least favorite die, by the way. It's too standard. Oh yeah, yeah, D6. What's your favorite? Oh, good question. Favorite dice. Uh, I, you know, I it may sound typical, but the, the D20. It's like, a good one. I really it's like the dice of fate. It is. It's like, yeah. you know, I throw a D4. I don't enjoy it. It doesn't roll. It just falls. Oh, D4s? Fall. Yeah. And they fall. Yeah, they and, suck. and if you step on them, they hurt. Oh, yeah, like so, Legos. Yeah, they're like. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, like they're like. Yeah, they're exactly they're, like Caltrops. Uh, yeah, Caltrops. They're yeah. designed to just puncture this, and, this foot. D6 or a dime a dozen. Any game you pick yeah, up every, is kind of a D6. Yeah. But that's the good thing about a D6, I think. D8, when it starts getting a little fascinating in my yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, that's interesting. D6 is versatile. Yep. Yeah. But D8 is interesting. D10, though, because, D10 is of, because the decimal system is so versatile. And, yeah. It is extremely I mean, the D100, the D10, it's got a wide range. Yeah, yeah. I had a D100 once, but you would wait forever for it to stop. Like, there's all these little facets on yeah. it, and you're like, that's the, the best thing. way to do a D100 yeah, D10, is just 2D10. Can, it's, it's 2D10? Yeah. That's it? 2D10. You're but the uh, D12 is a nice die. D, yeah, D12, like D12 gets overlooked good. a lot. I like D12. That was my favorite damage A lot of people ignore it. Yeah, da oh, of course. I love yeah, a D twelve, yeah. but yeah. two D six is better. I mean, in in scope of damage. Yeah, yeah. But I do like the feeling of just landing a twelve, mm. just rolling a twelve, and be like, I didn't get a critical, but I got a twelve. Isn't that a funny thing that as a gamer, to roll any of your dies and get to the maximum on the side, but mainly from like a you know a, a twelve and a twenty, mm -hmm. like to roll a twenty, like. There is this just moment where you're just like, fucking yes! I know, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's the best it's feeling in the world. awesome. It is. There's nothing better. You shouldn't get married. You shouldn't have kids. Just roll D20s <laughs> Until you get day. a 20. Especially when you're like, dice lights up when you get a 20. It's just like, Oh, remember Jason Miller? Yeah. Yeah, you dad's got one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can go through Think Geek. I think they're like 10 bucks. I got a new miniature. I got a metal one. Really? It's a, uh, it's a Viking, so... No surprise. I, my friend, <laughs> got a gift certificate for Christmas to order a custom one through Hero Forge. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, very yeah. excited to you be able to. You should definitely do that. Yes. I saw that. I heard they're releasing a bunch of new, like, uh, models, though, in a okay. few weeks, so I'm going to hold off. And yeah, I'd so. wait until they do that. Because from what I saw, I didn't, like. Yeah, yeah. I could do I the mean, Viking. It's cool. It's really cool. I could but... do the Viking, but it wouldn't be good. Yeah. I mean, it's just going to be awesome to be able to have one and be like, and wow. The one I found was awesome. Perfect. Like it just like fit every pretty much checklist I had as far as what I needed for me. You know, it blows my mind, and this goes to show you um, how popular Dungeons Dragons yeah. still is. Dwarven Forge. They mm -hmm. started. A, they've done two Kickstarter funds. Yeah. The first one raised like two point one million dollars, mm -hmm. yeah. and they were asking for what? It was like forty thousand or something yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. Pretty small that number. goes to show you a lot. Yeah. And there the are a second lot of people one, out there. Yeah, and it is becoming. Dungeons and Dragons, I think, is perfect because it's becoming more accepted, it's becoming more mainstream, mm -hmm. but it's not suffering from any of the, the negative effects of if something becoming mainstream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. can talk all day about how Wizards of the Coast is, no way is, it wor is worse than TSR, but oh, honestly, <laughs> and I agree with it, but in the end, the nice thing about role-playing games is they're supposed to be flexible. Mm -hmm. So if they go a direction you don't like, you know, screw it. You don't have to follow the yeah. rules. Why, why do I have to follow the rules? I don't know how many times, like, as a DM, the way I've been like, nope, I disagree with that house yeah. rule. I am completely Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a really... We, you could almost have an entire video about that. Yeah. About yeah. rules. There are very, varying DMs of varying different viewpoints on yeah, rules. You could almost oh. write, like, it, it's almost like a little... Uh, like it's a microcosm of like politics, like global yeah. politics. Like, do you prefer an authoritarian, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, like DM style, or m much more liberal? I'm the most anarchistic in the view that oh, you yeah, can yeah, do yeah, whatever yeah, the yeah. fuck you want. Well, with. I mean, there, are, like, you could spend <laughs> rules are power. <laughs> I mean, you could take a single spell and spend like an hour, like, yeah. with your campaign and be yeah. like, no, I can do this with yeah. the spell. No, you can't do that as well. It says here I can do it. And with you the spell. know what? Like, no, in, in yeah. figuring out, because I'm running a D and D campaign soon. 
next few weeks. I've been making magical weapons. Screw it. I'm yeah. not going to use the weapons they have in the oh, book. Oh, my God. Yeah, I wish I had not thrown away before I moved here. It's heartbreaking now. I never thought I'd play D&D again when I moved here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had, I mean, 14 notebooks full of games. Oh, just games man. that are written. I saved yeah. about, like, four of them. Like, oh, I'd love to have all of them. But that was something I would do. I would always love to create yeah. magical items. Well, okay, here's a book for items. Battle Axe that lets you fly. Comes back to your hand and heals once every three days. Well, like, you have to be careful with magical weapons because you don't want it to be so powerful that it just breaks the game. Well, if you're <laughs> a good enough DM, though, you want I it to think be powerful. There's always a way to circumnavigate. You, you want it to be powerful, but you also, if if it's powerful, like extremely powerful, there's got to be a price. Yeah, <laughs> but that, that's a that's an interesting thing to talk about because I know you, knowing you well, you're very much about equality yeah. and, and you try to make things absolutely perfect make sure everyone the entire uh, group is balanced that no one has a greater edge than anyone else yeah and not everyone shares that philosophy yeah other people out there you know yeah there are like some that. players that yeah. i have played with in the past who you know like they they try to push the issue as yeah. far as again to become Super either power. the best yeah, they can or, be yes and that's tough because like and I'd, don't, Everybody has a different play style. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't think the focus should be getting your character to the point. I think the focus should be the, the goal at hand, the but, story. But again, right. that's the problem, because yeah. the, many people have different motivations yeah. behind to why play they play Dungeons well, and yeah, yeah. And one of those motivations is, are, you know, is power gamers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that is a motivation. Yeah, I don't play with power gamers. 